So just to kind of let you know, kind of starting things a little early just to give people a chance to uh, find us and uh, get going. Uh, I know that we initially said we were going to do this on uh, YouTube, but um, based off of some of the permissions we have with our channel on YouTube, we couldn't do that. So or at least not with a mobile device. So um, decided to do Facebook Live this morning. So hopefully this is... Uh, beneficial to to everyone and looking forward to worshiping today so Well, we will uh, go ahead and get started. So I, I'm, I think I'm like a minute early, but oh well. But um, I will say good morning. And uh, obviously this is something a little bit new, a little bit different. And uh, I hope this is a blessing to you. I, I told Elizabeth and a few other people that uh, this will be uh, quite a different experience for me. And uh, But I'm glad that we have these abilities to... Uh, still worship together and to still connect with each other, even if it's in a, a bit of a, a different platform. Um, so I do hope this is a blessing to you. And I also hope that the same way that we approach these on Sunday morning, uh, whenever we uh, come with great expectations, I hope that you've come with those very same expectations today. Um, because though we may not be worshiping to God, we, worshiping God today uh, in person, uh, physically with each other, uh, we're still worshiping God in spirit and in truth. And so I hope that you uh, expect great things in this time. Um, I will just mention just a few announcements. Um, just as a reminder, all of our activities scheduled for the church this week have been canceled. Uh, the deacons will be communicating uh, this week, myself, the deacons will, uh, to determine if anything needs to take place next week. We'll be monitoring uh, uh, what local authorities say, and um, if things uh, stay the same or get better, or if things get worse, then we will make sure that everybody in the church knows what's going on. Also, if you're not on the phone tree, uh, send me a message via text or um, through uh, Facebook Messenger, or get a hold of me one way or another, and I'll make sure you get on the phone tree. I do realize that there are some people uh, that may not know exactly what's going on because they're not on the phone, tr phone tree, so just... Uh, Get a hold of me, and I'll make sure you get on that. Uh, also, we were supposed to have a called business meeting this coming Wednesday night. Uh, that's obviously going to be rescheduled, and when we do reschedule that, uh, we'll make sure that announcements are made. And then also, God willing, uh, March 29th is Youth Sunday here at the church, uh, and so I look forward to uh, worshiping with our youth leading the service that morning, and then also... Uh, following the service, there will be a fried chicken fundraiser lunch, and um, we I encourage you to keep that in mind. And so uh, now with all the announcements out of the way, uh, let's go to God in prayer and ask God's blessings upon uh, this time of worship. Almighty God, we thank you that, that you love us, that you never leave us, that you never forsake us, God. We thank you for the privilege of worship, God. It may not be the way we're used to it, but God, we thank you that we we can worship you at all times and in many different ways, God. I pray that, that what we do this morning will bring glory and honor to you, God, that all of this is for you. And God, I pray that we, your children, would remember that. God, help us to focus on you during this time. May we give you our best in worship. And God, may everything that is said and done during this time be pleasing to you. I got this in all prayers we ask in Jesus' name, and amen. So I want to uh, begin our time of worship together with a song, and uh, there'll be some songs that hopefully are relatively familiar to you since uh, we don't have the lyrics. And so this first song is uh, one of our hymns, and it is the song At the Cross. And so, uh, if you know it, I encourage you to sing along with me.
As we uh, continue our time together, uh, we are going to uh, have a scripture reading from Matthew chapter 6, uh, reading verses 25 through 34. Uh, this is a portion of uh, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. It says, it says uh, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither tor toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith! Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. May God add his blessings to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Uh, at this time, we're going to uh, get ready to go to God in prayer. And, um, you know, we have a lot to be thankful for. Um, we have our family and our friends and our church family. Um, we have the technology that we have. Uh, just this this ability. Uh, just a few years ago, would not have been would not have been available. So thankful to God for uh, these abilities to be able to worship God in this way, and to be able to connect with each other in this way. And also thankful for doctors and nurses and and uh, medical advances. And uh, thankful for what God is going to do in providing the answers for uh, uh, what's keeping us from being able to be together today. And then we also have many needs. Our, our church bulletin is full of individuals within our church family, our extended family, our church community uh, that, that need a touch. Uh, 
We do want to specifically mention our national and, and local government officials. Uh, uh, this is a difficult time. They, they have a difficult job anyways. But uh, remembering that, that uh, they need God's wisdom and God's strength to, to make the appropriate decisions. Um, also, uh, remembering those families that have lost loved ones, uh, some to uh, this virus and, and uh, some for other reasons. Uh, remembering all of those, I know that uh, uh, there was um, a loss of some students that attend the University of Mount Olive uh, this past week. And so uh, remembering all of those families that are mourning the loss of loved ones. Um, also remembering our church. I do pray uh, for all of our church members, those that call this church their home, as well as all of our church leaders. And I also ask for your prayers too as a pastor. And then let's also keep um, all the lost in our prayers as well. So uh, let's go to God in prayer and, and just exercise the faith that God has given us in him. So let's pray. God, we come before you this morning acknowledging that you are good. You are an awesome, amazing, and powerful God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love that you've extended to us. God, it is because of your grace that we have salvation. It is because of the faith that you have given us that we can believe, God. God, we thank you for your holiness and for your justice and for your judgment because you will not leave sin unpunished, God. You do not want us to stay in our sin. God, we simply adore you for being who you are, for being God. And God, may it encourage our praise in times like this, as well as in every day of our life, to praise you for who you are, because you are worthy of all praise. God, we confess that when we look at you and we look at who we are, that we fall so short. We are not deserving of anything that you have given us. But God, we thank you that you have moved in mighty ways, and one of those ways is in providing forgiveness for our sins. God, we have many things to thank you for. God, as has been shared this morning, our family, our friends, the technologies that we have, God, the medical advances, and God, the doctors and nurses that you have given us. And God, for all of those things, we thank you because they are part of your grace. There are ways that you have shown us that you love us, God. God, we come before you seeking for you to hear our prayers as we bring our needs to you. God, we lift up our, our governmental leaders to you. God, we pray for your wisdom, for your guidance, for your strength, and for, for you to, to just move within their lives and to move within our nation, God. I pray that, that you would calm the, the panic that seems to have set in within some people, God, and help us to know that especially for your children, we have nothing to fear because, God, you have not given us a spirit of fear. But God, you've given, us a, you've given us faith. You've given us confidence in you. God, help us to trust you. God, I pray that, that you would uh, give the, the researchers, the doctors and the nurses, the the knowledge that they need to come up with uh, the cures for uh, this virus, the vaccines. God, I pray that that you would uh, that you would help them to use the talents that you have given them. God, for the many other needs that we know of. God, for our community, for our country. God, for our church. We we say a prayer asking that you will move in ways that only you can. And God. When you do answer, help us to return to you to give you the praise, honor, and glory for it all. Now, God, this and all prayers we ask in the precious and holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And amen. As we uh, continue our time together, I want to do uh, one more song. And uh, uh, it's one that has kind of become a, a favorite of the worship band. It's one of my favorites. And uh, it should be fairly familiar to you. So uh, hopefully you will you will uh, sing along at home with with me as I uh, do uh, living hope.
Well, uh, hopefully um, you have uh, your Bible handy, and uh, you can join me in Psalm 23. Um, this isn't going to be a traditional sermon. Uh, it's just more going to really just be some thoughts from God's Word. Uh, it's not what I initially planned on preaching today, and so um, God led me to this actually uh, kind of this morning as I was reflecting upon maybe what I should do or what I should do differently, and so I just want to share some, some thoughts for you from Psalm 23, and I want to begin by reading Psalm 23 in its entirety. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, uh, we mention, we read that psalm, and then compare that to when you hear the phrase, the coronavirus, or the COVID-19. And it's a phrase that produces one of two responses. Some people are like, oh, whatever. It's just nothing. It's just Another sickness, you get a cold, you'll be better in two or three days, and you're done. And then you get the complete opposite, where some people are saying, oh no, it's the end of the world as we know it. But the scripture tells us not to fear and not to be anxious over anything, because our God can handle it. There's nothing outside of what our God can handle. God also gave us good common sense, though. God gave us a brain. And he gave people the ability to understand and to, to study and to become experts. So paying attention to the warnings are wise. So then the question becomes, how do you balance all this out? How do you balance the, the concerns of what the experts say and, and what the news tells us and uh, what maybe our president or governor or other local authorities say that may get us a little anxious, that may get us a little worried, and how do we balance that out with knowing that we have not been given a spirit of fear? Well, I believe that this is where a passage like Psalm 23 speaks to us. It's a very familiar psalm. And so I want to share some thoughts and reminders to you from this passage of Scripture this morning. And I want to begin by telling you this. These are words of comfort specifically for God's Children, So I want to start at the very beginning by saying, if you have not repented and believed, if you are not a child of God, then these words of comfort do not speak directly to you. Now, let me, let me help you to understand. You can have these words of comfort. And the first step there simply is to humble yourself before an almighty God, acknowledge your sinfulness, repent of your sins, and put your faith in Jesus Christ. If you do that, then these words of promise are for you. And if you have done that, then these words of promise are for you. So let's look specifically at what God's word says here. It begins with saying, the Lord is my shepherd. Now we have many things and many people and many different groups that may try to shepherd us, that may try to lead us. But in the Gospel of John, Jesus says that he is the good shepherd. There are a lot of shepherds out there. There are a lot of people who will try to lead, who will try to take us to places. And some of them may try to do well, but if they try to do well for the wrong reasons, they try to do well without God's empowering, they are going to fail. They are going to fall short. In all likelihood, they're going to lead us to places we don't need to go. And so Jesus is our good shepherd. He is our leader. He is our guide. He is our provider. He is our source of hope. And from this point forward, David speaks of all that our good shepherd does. And so let, let's just take a look at some of what David says. He, says. he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What we need to understand is with God, we will not lack. 
Look back at to look back at the words that we read from Matthew chapter six. Why do we worry about what we eat? Look at the birds of the air. They do not they do not sow. They do not tend a field. They don't harvest yet. Our great God takes care of them. How much more will God take care of us? You know, at times we get so worried about the things that are going on in the world around us that we forget we serve a God that owns this entire world. This world is his and everything in it. God can take care of us. God will take care of us. That's promises from Scripture. God has not broken his promises, and I don't believe he ever will. David continues on and says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. What I see here is that God leads us to exactly what we need at exactly the right moment. That many times we see a need and at first we begin to fret. And maybe we turn that need over to God. Maybe we do go to God faithfully and say, God, here's this need. Here's this problem. I need you to move. Here's this virus going throughout our country. And God, we need you to move. But we look and we see, at least in our minds, God isn't moving. Or God, we begin to think maybe God doesn't care. But what we need to understand is this, that God is our good shepherd, will move at just the right moment and do just the right thing. He will move us to the green pastures when we need it. He'll take us to the still waters at the right moment. And one other word I want to share here, just because God doesn't move and act the way that we think he should at the moment that we think he should doesn't mean that things have gone wrong. It doesn't mean that God's not answering. We have to understand this, our scope, what we can see, what we can take in, what we can understand is so limited. It's limited by our own comprehension. It's limited by where we are and what's going on around us. But God has a picture that's much grander than ours. He sees the entire world. He sees past, present, and future. He understands it all. And so just because God doesn't answer a prayer the way we think it should be answered or do things in the timing that we think it should be done or just because God doesn't break in and perform a miracle in our situation when he does with somebody else's doesn't mean that God's not good and doesn't mean that God isn't answering. Friends, what that means is we simply need to trust God and understand that God's ways are higher than our ways and greater than our ways. And that God is doing what's right. David continues on and says, he restores my soul. Restoration. You see, the cares of this world and the worries of this world, the problems of this world have this, this tremendous ability to tear us down. But then... Take it deeper. Spiritual struggles and spiritual battles beat us up. And we find ourselves in those moments where we're saying, I'm so tired. And the great thing is we find our restoration in God. We find our restoration when we plug ourselves into God's word, when we pray, when we worship both corporately and individually. God is our source of strength. He is our source of restoration. He's our source of power. And continuing with the psalm, he says, He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, righteousness is doing right, is living right. And that only comes by being empowered by God. And so he leads us in the right way in all parts of our lives, so long as we submit to that leadership. And this is for two reasons. One, for our good. Living right benefits us. Living right keeps us out of mess, keeps us out of spiritual danger. But it is also, he says, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God leads us in paths of righteousness for his glory, for his honor. Our ability to live right is actually not our ability at all. It's God's strengthening us. God gives us that ability. So our ability to live right and our good actions, the things that we do as we are operating as the hands and feet and voice of God, bring glory and honor, not to ourselves, and when we're doing it as a church, not to the church, but to Jesus Christ, to God Almighty. Everything 
that we do should be to the glory and honor of God. And he leads us in paths of righteousness so that we can bring him honor and glory. He gives us the abilities to do what we do and to say what we say and to go where we go for his honor and for his glory. David continues on and says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In the midst of every problem, in the midst of sickness, in the midst of death, children of God have nothing to fear. Why? Because God is with us. When David wrote this, this was before Jesus had come. This was before the Holy Spirit had been poured out, but he knew God the Father was with him. We have the Gospels that show that Christ came. He was Emmanuel, God with us. And when he, when he was on this earth, he said, I'm going to leave, but I will not leave you alone. I will send the Comforter. I will send my Spirit, and he will be with you. Y'all, God kept that promise. We have the Holy Spirit. God is with us at all times, no matter where we go, no matter what situation we are going through. He has led us to this point, and he will lead us through this point. Now, I have, I'm not God, so I don't know what this virus may do. This virus may fizzle out, and we may look at this and say, wow, what an overreaction. Then again, we may look at this two or three months from now and say, man, this was bad. But regardless, if it turns out good, if it turns out bad, if it turns out somewhere in the middle, God is with us. He's with us now. He'll be with us through this through this point in time and through other trials, through other difficulties, through other problems that come. God will be with us and we have nothing to fear. He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I want you to think about this for one second. Think about a lamb just eating, relaxing, resting, while it's being circled by wolves, hungry, snarling wolves that want to get at that lamb. Here's the problem for the wolves, that is. They can't because the shepherd is actively protecting the lamb. The, 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 she, the sheep is able to relax because the shepherd is on the scene. Our shepherd does the very same of us, the enemy. The scripture says he is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He is roaming, looking. But our shepherd is on the scene. Our good shepherd is taking care of us. And in the midst of the enemy, in all his work, we could and should be at peace. He says, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. We know from Scripture that anointing is setting apart. So God has set us apart from the rest of the world. God has claimed us as his own. All who repent and believe, all who claim Jesus Christ as their Savior have been set apart. We're God's, y'all. And that should lead us to praise. That should lead us to trust. That should lead us to faith. Because God's got us and God's got this. He closes out the psalm by saying, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Basically what we see is the blessings of God will be a part of his life. The goodness of God will pursue him. God's salvation, God's love, all of God's goodness. The mercy of God will pursue him. The mercy being God's grace. And the opportunity to worship God, all of this will be a part of his life because God is his Savior, because God is his good shepherd. I'm glad that God is my shepherd. I'm glad that I don't have to worry. I don't have to fret. I don't have to fear. And if you're a child of God, you don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. You don't have to fear because God is your shepherd too. We're going to close with one more song. And during this song, I want to encourage you uh, to, to just ask God if you're one of those ones that's, I guess, uh, 
uh, kind of freaking out, then I want to encourage you to spend some time asking God for uh, the ability to to trust, to, to ask Him to strengthen your faith, to trust in His goodness, in His goodness and His mercy, and also maybe take this time to thank God that that He has provided for us. Uh, the song, this last song, will be uh, "Come Thou Fount." So, um, just a couple closing comments real quickly. I, I hope this is, that this has been a blessing to you. And um, if it has, you know, uh, share it with, share it with uh, your friends on your uh, Facebook pages. And because um, uh, we, we all need these words of comfort from God's word. I um, also want to encourage you to take care of yourselves. Uh, for those of you that uh, uh, some of our older members and some of you that may uh, be susceptible to getting sick and encourage you to kind of stay home. Um, don't go out unless you have to. And um, also, if you uh, need anything, uh, please contact me or one of the deacons or one of your one of your other uh, brothers and sisters here at the church. Uh, we want to help as much as we can. 
And um, and so uh, we'll be praying. Uh, we're going to put all this in God's hands, and whatever happens, happens. And know that uh, that uh, God will take care of us because he is our good shepherd. Uh, let's go to God in prayer. Uh, God, you are amazing. You are powerful. You are awesome. You are God. You are our shepherd. God, help us to trust you. Help us to know that none of this is outside of of your knowledge, and none of this is outside of your strength and capabilities. God, help us to put our full faith in you. God, where we have those moments of anxiety, God, may we may we feel your presence. God, may your Holy Spirit strengthen us. God, may we also uh, uh, take the advice of those that you have placed in, in positions of authority, God. God, so that uh, we can we can be protected so that we can be safe, and God, so that we can uh, uh, be seen through this. I pray, God, that we would seek in every part of our lives and at all times in our lives to lead lives that are worthy of the title Christian. Now, God, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And all of God's children said, Amen.